Heavenly Father, as we gather in this place on this Sunday morning, on this Labor Day weekend, we just give you thanks for this Sabbath day. We give you thanks for this place to gather together, to hear your word, to be lifted up. We just ask that as we gather here that we'd be able to set aside the things um, that keep us from you, the things that we have to do yet today, the places that our mind wanders, that we can focus on your word, that we can be filled up so we can be sent out. We ask this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. I started us out on this sermon series um, just as school was finishing up, and here we are at the end as school is starting again. And we started with Adam and Eve talking about these extraordinary, um, this extraordinary God that uses ordinary people in every ways, um, these people that fall short, these people in the Old Testament that don't always get it right, but it's not about them, but it's about the God that calls them and works through them. And today we finish up um, at the very end of this with um, John the Baptist. So um, when we laid out the sermon series, Pastor Tim said, would you um, finish us up in the Old Testament um, people with John the Baptist? And guess what I first said to him? Uh, John the Baptist isn't in the Old Testament, right? But John the Baptist is kind of the bookend of this because John the Baptist is coming right before the Messiah. He's the one that, um, the last of these great prophets, um, that points the way to the Messiah. He's preparing the way. So I want you to help me tell the story of John the Baptist, okay? I'm going to ask you to think a little bit. Who are John the Baptist's parents? Elizabeth and Zachariah, right? And who is Elizabeth to Jesus' mother Mary? Cousins, right? And Jesus, when Mary finds out that she's pregnant um, with Jesus, where's the first place that she goes? To Elizabeth's, right? Elizabeth is important to her. We've talked about this before, that if you're going to go somewhere, if you're worried about what's next, your future, she was thinking that no one would accept her, that she'd be sent out. The first place that she goes is to Elizabeth's. And as Elizabeth opens the door and welcomes her, it's about a three-day journey for Mary to get there. She opens the door and welcomes her, and she is, Elizabeth is pregnant with John the Baptist, and what happens? The baby leaps in her womb. Even at that moment, John the Baptist, even in Elizabeth's womb, knows that this Jesus, that something big is happening, right? That there is a next, that this is a big thing. So John grows up in this Jewish tradition with these great foundations of religion and knowing his God, okay? So John the Baptist, it's time for him um, to go out. He's probably in his late 20s, early 30s, and it's time for him to start his ministry. And he goes out and he starts baptizing people and calling them to repentance. Turn back to God. Build your foundation on the one who has created you, right? He's baptizing them and calling them for repentance. So the people start questioning because they're waiting for a Messiah. They asked him what? are you the Messiah? Are you the one that we've hoped for? And John says, I am not, but the one that comes after me is the one who will be the Messiah. He's pointing towards Jesus. He's preparing the way. And on this Sunday, as we talk about John's ministry, on the other side of the cross, we live on the opposite side of the cross from John, Jesus has now come, he has died for our sins, and he has risen to new life, and in that we have the promise of forgiveness and the life to come. But we're still living before Jesus comes again. And we are called, just like John, to prepare the way and to be about the business of bringing people to repentance and bringing people the good news. So I'm wondering on this day, on Labor Day weekend, what it means to be about preparing the way. If we are called, like John is called, to prepare the way, what does that look like in our world, in our time? Does that look like John? Do we stand on the corner and call people bro to vipers, <laughs> like John did? I'm not good at that. What does that look like? The first thing that John is, if we go back, is that he's rooted in 
his faith. He's rooted in his God. I've said this before, but if we look at the cross, the up and down part of the cross is our relationship with God, and the sideways piece is our relationship with others. The first part of the commandments are all about our relationship with God. The second part of the commandments is about our relationship with others. When Jesus comes and he gives two commandments, what are they? To love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So we're going to focus on that first one. On this Labor Day weekend, what does it mean to have Sabbath and to be in relationship with God? My last child, I have four of them, my last child is a kindergartner this year, and she started in school, um, and she is super excited. So a couple weeks ago, they had Thursday and Friday school, and on Saturday morning, she woke up and she said, are we getting ready for school? And I said, no, it's the weekend. You have a couple stay-home days. And she goes, what? I don't want to stay home. For her, school is amazing. She loves it. She gives it at all, her all. She is there and she is ready to learn. And so on Monday when we dropped her off again, she's standing in her line. She doesn't want to give me kisses or hugs because she's wondering why I need those so much. Her words, why do you need hugs and kisses all the time, Mom? right? She's got this. And she comes home on Monday from school, and she is exhausted. And this is our child, the third one. She didn't really nap much. She's always been on the go. But she is exhausted, and she looks at me and my husband, and she says, I think I'm going to give myself a nap now. (laughs) What? I wished for this for many years, right? And we kind of looked at each other to see how this would play out, right? So she goes back to her room, and she lays down, and Eric goes, she won't fall asleep. I said, I don't know. She's kind of tired. Yeah, the other two never did that. People talked about their children coming home from school and being exhausted. My other two were never like that. So I go back there about five minutes later, and she is out cold. So I went back to him and said, uh, I'm not staying up all night. <laughs> We should probably wake her up. But it reminded me that when you are giving your all, when you're doing the things, we are created to need rest. We are created to need rest. How many of you have been stressed out the last few weeks, right? Life has been going, we get busy, We do the things, we need to be perfect, it needs to look good, all of those things, and they can be great and wonderful things. School is wonderful, but even in the midst of the good things, we need rest. God created us to need to lean into him and plug in and check in and need rest. And that rest doesn't always mean a nap, although sometimes it could, but that rest means checking in and getting in line with the God who created us. It means checking in and making sure that we remember the promise. I always tell people that my work life and getting stuff done around here and preparing a sermon and writing the articles or whatever I have in my plate is different than my spiritual life outside of that. That you might say, but Pastor Sarah, you don't need to worry about checking in and all that stuff because you do work at the church, right? Well, in fact, that's probably the opposite. You give and you give, and writing a sermon is different than spending time and filling up for myself. And when I get stressed out and life happens, guess what I forget to do? Check in and make sure that I'm filled. And it takes me probably a week or two, and I get a little agitated, and I'm sometimes not very nice, and I sometimes um, don't always, um, I get a little jumpy or a little snappy sometimes, right? We all do it. And then I realize what I'm missing. Being plugged in, hearing the promise again, being reminded of whose I am, being reminded that it's not me that does this work. It's not you that does the work, but it's God equipping you wherever it is God has called you to be. God creates the world in how many days? Six. And he does what on the seventh? Rest. God himself rests. 
Jesus, when he's had too much, when life has gotten overwhelming, what does he do? He goes by himself and he does what? He prays. We are created to be in line with the one who has created us. We're created to remember whose we are and that we are first forgiven and loved and that we are cared for so that way we can do what? The other part of the cross, to love and forgive and care for people and tell them about the good news. One of the ways that we prepare the way is first knowing whose we are. But does John stop there? So he's baptizing them. That does he say, go home and just live in that? He calls them to go out and to do something about that. If you have two coats, to give one to a neighbor. If you have enough food, to share with others. On this Labor Day weekend, I want you to think about the rest and the filling up that needs to happen, and then about the going out. I firmly believe that God is out in front of us preparing ways and places for us to be about ministry. And when I'm connected to him, I see those places more clearly of where I can be and where my hands and my feet and where I can speak the promise of the resurrection for others. This, um, I always say my middle child collects people. Um, She collects um, friends like none other. And the last couple weeks, she's made some new friends, and they've started coming over to the house, and um, she just keeps bringing more in, and I'm not really sure where they're all coming from, but um, I'm embracing it, right? And one of her little friends, I heard them having a conversation outside the other day, and she says, uh, my Emma says to her, where do you go to church? And she says, we don't go to church. And I thought, ah, That's a perfect place to be able to tell her about the one that loves her. That I can empower my children to invite and to care for her and to let her know of a God that loves her and about what this whole thing of Jesus dying and rising again. As I'm in tune with the one who loves me and cares for me and the one that creates me, My ears are perked in different ways to see and to hear the needs of others. I can care for people better. I want you to think about all the ways and places that you are already preparing the way. In your jobs, in your homes. Sometimes people ask me um, that aren't a part of Glory Day, they'll say, what are ways that Glory Day does ministry um, in Sioux Falls? And I'll say, do you have a couple hours? Because let me tell you about them. Let me tell you all the ways and the places and the things that we do. And some of you are plugged into those places. Some of you are plugged into places through work. Some of you are plugged into places through your homes and through your kids. Where are places that you are already doing that work? I got to tell my kindergarten um, teacher, my kindergarten, my kindergartner's teacher, last night, that every night Millie prays for her. Because she does God's work in a public school when she loves and cares for those kids. Where are places that you are already doing that work and showing people and preparing the way? And where are places that maybe God is asking you to stretch your boundaries a little bit? Asking you to tell another person? Asking you to invite somebody? God calls us to be in communion with him so that way we can spread the good news and prepare the way to tell others about this awesome and amazing news that we know that we are forgiven, that you are loved, that you are enough, that you are a child of God, and when we get it wrong, which we do sometimes, that we are washed anew and that we are sent back out. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks this day. We give you thanks for the rest that we can have as we come to this place through music, through song, through scripture, that we can be filled up. Heavenly Father, I just ask that all of these people remember the promise that you gave them in their baptism, 
the promise that you gave them because they are children of God, that they are washed anew, that they are enough, that they are forgiven, that they are loved. Help us to always be connected to you, to align with you, so that we can go out and do good work in this world. Be with them and their lives and work and play and school, wherever it is that you call them to be. Help us to share your good news. We ask this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen.